Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Jay from Coding with Jaybird, where I upload weekly tutorials to help build your confidence in coding. Today we're gonna to talk about classes and IDs. Let's get started, shall we? If you recall, in my last video, we talked about linking an external style sheet, and we've created this external styles.css style sheet. Now, in this particular style sheet, we had a selector P, and what we had done was we had targeted every single paragraph tag and given them a font family of Arial. Now in this particular demonstration, I don't wanna do that. I want different paragraphs to have different styling. So we're gonna learn a little bit about how to do that today. Also, I had two different section elements that I had used as my selectors. So what I had done was I had actually overwritten my first section with some of the styling that was further down in my CSS by rewriting section as a selector. So once again, we don't wanna do that. What I wanna do this time is I want this lower section to be slightly different than my upper section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna comment these two sections and the paragraph out completely. And you do that by doing a command forward slash on a Mac or a control forward slash on a Windows. And you can see I've commented the CSS code out. And now when I save it, all that styling has been removed. Now, in order to apply different styling to different elements on the web page, we're going to make use of classes and IDs. So, an ID can only be used once on a web page, and it's used to apply some CSS styling to one particular element on a page. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this first section and apply some CSS styling to it that's unique to this section alone. So I can do that by creating an attribute in the opening section tag called ID equals quotation. And in there, I'm gonna come up with some kind of meaningful name. And it's a name that I come up with. It can be anything of my liking. So what I wanna do is I want this section to be highlighted, to sort of have its own unique styling. So I'm just gonna call it highlight. And then I'm gonna go in my CSS style sheet and I'm going to try to target that ID of highlight. So when I wanna target that ID, I have to use the symbol number sign or hashtag and then write the word highlight, followed by space and curly braces. So this is my new selector. So instead of having the word section or the element section as the selector itself, I'm gonna have the word highlight as selector, and that selector is referencing this ID, which equals highlight. So let's say I wanna give this section a border of two, oops, two pixels, solid black. And let's say I wanna give it some padding of 20 pixels. Now, if you don't know what some of these things are, that's okay, we're gonna learn a bit more about the CSS properties and their values as I continue in the following weeks. And I'd also like to give it a background color of let's say pink and now you can see that we've applied the styling specifically to the first section alone if I scroll down you're gonna see this section doesn't have any styling on it okay so let's go ahead and now we'll target the second section with its own unique ID so I can say ID equals and let's just call this box oops that has to be in the quotation so box and again, that's just some word that I came up with because I wanna give it a look of a box. So I'll save that. And then in my CSS style sheet, I'm gonna use that number sign to target that word box or that idea of box, followed by curly braces. And this idea box is my new selector that's gonna select the second section down on the page. And for this particular one, I'm just gonna copy some of the styling that I had already used up above. So let's copy that as our border, and then let's give it this padding and this background image. And upon saving it, you can see that the styling has been applied and it looks different than the section up above. All right, so that explains a little bit about IDs and how they can be used on a web page. Now note that we cannot have the same ID twice. So I can't call this an ID a box and then this an ID a box. So that word highlight or box can only be used once on this web page. Now classes are a bit different. A class may be used once or multiple times on a web page. It's used to apply some CSS styling to multiple elements on a page. 
you can have multiple classes on a particular element as well. So let's practice that. So what I want to do is I want some of these paragraph tags that I have here to look a little different. I would like to put a class on the second paragraph tag. So I'll create an attribute called class equals quotation. And in here, once again, I'm going to come up with a word of my choice. So I just want these paragraphs to pop. So I'll just use the word pop. Now I'm going to go in my CSS style sheet and I'd like to target that class of pop. Now classes are targeted by the dot or period. So I'll write dot pop curly braces. So this pop is now my selector, which is targeting that second paragraph. So this paragraph that we see here on the right. And what I'm going to do is apply some unique styling to this paragraph. So let's just say I want this to have a font family of Arial. I'll give it a slightly larger font size of 20 pixels. And let's also give it the color red. And as you can see after saving it that we've changed the look of our second paragraph and all the other paragraphs still look the same. And that's because we've targeted this class in particular. Now the beauty of classes is you can use them multiple times on a web page. So now all I have to do is go further down in my document and any other paragraph that I'd like to look like this paragraph, I can simply add that attribute class equals pop. You can see I've changed the look of one of my paragraphs in the second section. So let's go ahead and add another class to the second paragraph in here. Oops. And we have to make sure we write the word inside of the quotations. And now our second paragraph also looks red and has this Arial font and a slightly larger font size. Now, as you can see, classes and IDs are extremely useful in styling our web pages. Now, so far, all I've demonstrated here is one particular class value of pop. You can also have multiple class values on a particular element. So I can go inside the second paragraph and I can create a new class name. So let's say I want to make this text slanted. So I'll just say slanted. And again, that doesn't mean anything. That's just a word I came up with. And now I'll go in my style sheet and down below, I'm going to write dot to target that as a class slanted. Now that'll be my selector followed by curly braces and the property and its value. So I just want to change its font style and I would like to make it italic. And as you can see, we've created this slanted or italic font in our second paragraph. However, if I scroll down further in the document, you'll see the other two red paragraphs are not slanted. So this styling is only applied to wherever I have the class of slanted. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video on classes and IDs. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. I'm really having a great time making them. If you are enjoying them, please, please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay up to date with the next video in this series. Until next week, keep on coding.